Fantasi. Going to talk about uh, Song Chin and Kyushu today. I was uh, talking with a friend yesterday. He's a Weichi Wu practitioner. Uh, has a school in Peabody, Mass. Uh, the Authentic Training Center. Um, and I'll put a link below to his YouTube channel, and um, you can go from there and find his site and talk to him or uh, communicate with him. Anyway, we're going to be doing a seminar uh, together in January 2019 in Salem, Massachusetts. And we were talking about the seminar and how we were going to put the San Chin together with the Q Show and different aspects. And we're going to do a, a conversation later on Skype and record it and play it back on the, uh, the YouTube channel here. So you'll hear uh, how we're developing it and whatnot. So anyway, uh, he was asking me uh, a couple questions on Q Show um, as I was asking him on Weichi. And uh, we were talking about the, the neck. He said, to me, it seems like the neck is the weakest spot of the human body. And he was saying that the, how he attacked it and how uh, uh, most karate practitioners attack it. And he asked my opinion of what I would do for the neck. And he was saying that he was striking uh, uh, straight in, coming in with either the chop or the, the, the sorry, the ridge hand coming, coming in at a uh, 90 degree angle sideways. And I was telling him, yeah, that's, of course, devastating. It's going to break the person's neck and cause a permanent injury, including the stoppage of breath, the stoppage of the heart, because of the nerves that are involved in that area of the neck and what they innervate. Also, uh, if you don't uh, end up um, uh, killing the person, you're going to end up um, severely wounding them, up to and including paraplegia or quadriplegia, which means nothing from the neck down works and nothing from the waist down works. So I was saying, you know, if you use this in a self-defense, most people just don't think about, about this. If you use it with the power that a witchy practitioner or a regular karate practitioner is used to and uh, trained to uh, accomplish, then you're going to uh, have this effect. But when you go into court, you're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble because now this person's permanently damaged, can't work, you're going to have to support his family, and blah, blah, blah. So um, he was asking me, so what would I do to the neck? And I, said, I told him, the, you know, the neck is not meant to be hit down from a, a straight in as a Q show attack. That's a pure physical brute force and trauma type of a technique and very effective, okay? Let's be, be a little bit more smart. I said, if you take the nerve that comes across the neck, it's called a transverse cervical nerve. And when you strike this, if you strike it down and in with a sharper object like the iron bone, the corner of the iron bone hand, with the correct um, twisting and trajectory that you're supposed to be doing, whether you catch the uh, nerve in the front of the muscle, the side of the muscle, or the back of the muscle, doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter which way the guy turns his head as long as you clip it down and in. And the down uh, trajectory is toward that opposite foot, okay? And same thing on this side, you go to the opposite foot. That's when you're going to start to enact many different um, structures and uh, functionalities of the human body. First of all, you've got the neurological shock. You're going to shock the nerve. It's going to send a blast of energy into the brain. The brain's not going to be able to handle it. It's going to have all the transmission of energy surging to the brain, leaving no uh, transmissions going down to the body. The body collapses because the muscles become weakened because the, uh, the, the neurological um, transmissions to make those muscles firm and to get blood down there and everything else just um, gets very stifled okay or stops and the body collapses because it, the muscles can't support the body's weight any longer that drops the person it can knock the person unconscious as well but just dropping the person you've already won the fight you can take off uh, you can escalate if you need to you can do whatever you need to do put more control on the person that that's your call at that particular time all right but uh, when we got into uh, different structures too, you've got the muscle spindle cells. In the muscles, there's something called muscle spindle cell. I did a video on that too. I'm not going to rehash that. But that's a, a reflexive action, okay? And that causes all the, the muscles uh, in the body uh, to uh, act in a certain way. And that causes further dysfunction and paralyzation. And then you also have uh, the tendons uh, attacked. All right, you're going to be attacking um, the blood flow. Okay, so there's so many different physiological functions that are going to be attacked if you hit the neck the right way. There's severe damage uh, uh, if you hit the uh, wrong way. Uh, not the wrong way, but the, mm, the typical way or the conventional way.
right, let's take a look at the uh, anatomy here to talk uh, more in detail about um, the targeting that I was discussing with uh, Quimby Sensei. And um, here we are at the side of the neck. Okay, let's go to the skeletal structure first. If you were to strike in with a 90 degree angle on either side or the back or even the front, well, let's go to the front first. Okay, um, let's see if we get those lungs in here and get rid of the muscles. Okay, you got the windpipe right in through here. A straight in um, shot is going to damage the windpipe. Of course, the person can choke and suffocate. Um, that's very uh, dangerous if you hit that uh, at a 90 degree angle with power uh, as that of a karate practitioner. All right, now if you hit in from the side, obviously you're going to be pinching off some nerves. Let's catch in here a little bit further. Okay, and we can start to see that um, there's too much stuff going on here. You got the vagal nerve tie-in, you got the phrenic nerve tie-in. There's just too much um, dangerous uh, involvement here. And this, um, the neck nerves innervate the most of the body and the organs, so it it could be very dangerous, and you could sever the nerves that could uh, make you quadriplegic or um, paraplegic. Okay, paraplegic meaning just your uh, lower body does not work, your two lower limbs, and quadriplegic means you lose control of all your limbs. Very dangerous um, for any individual. If you hit them from the back, same thing can occur, or you could snap one of these processes. Um, major uh, damage there, and you're going to cause distress and dysfunction for the rest of that person's life. Let's put the uh, muscles back on, okay, and take a look at the side of the neck here. Now, what I was describing to uh, Sensei Quimby was um, targeting this nerve here. Okay, this nerve is called the transverse cervical nerve. All right, and you have an application where you could target it from the front, you can target it from the side, you can target it from the rear of the, the muscle groups right in there. All right, and let's take a closer look here. And you can see this nerve, transverse cervical nerve. Let's peel back the muscle a little bit, and you can see how it innervates right into the spine or right into this nerve here, and that's the spinal nerve number three. Um, th these nerves are very um, dangerous to um, disrupt uh, it on a physical level. Say if I, I broke the neck in a particular uh, position from a 90-degree shot with a shooto, you could sever one of these nerves, and that's what's going to cause the major problems. But this transverse cervical nerve being on the um, outside of the muscle is cushioned a little bit. Now, if you hit in the front, you're going to see that um, you have a nerve plexus. Okay, That's going to send a good neurological shock into the, uh, the, the spine up to the brain and cause a lot of physical dysfunction, uh, but without the damage. All right, You have this muscle protecting the underlying structures. Taking away the muscle, you, of course, can see this uh, very important vein right here, and that's the internal jugular vein. Um, to hit the carotid artery, which is way in back here, that's even um, further in. So you're going to have a, a little bit of difficulty getting there, especially if you have the muscles um, protecting it and the person has trained their muscles, their neck muscles, or um, they're in good physical condition. Now, you can also attack the nerve and the vein on the outside. All right, this is the external jugular vein. Let's take away the muscles again. Underneath is really nothing. And um, the veins are not as important to hit as the arteries uh, for the reason that it's returning blood to the, the heart to get uh, pumped through the lungs and catch oxygen again instead of going to the major organs or functionality of the body. It's returning, used up, going to get replenished. It's the arteries here that are the important things for um, learning how to um, target. Anyway, I don't want to get too much into the blood. Let's go back out to the muscle groups, okay? And you can follow this right around to the back here, and that's where that hollow pocket is. Now, a lot of people like to use gallbladder 20, which is pictured up and through here, but man, there's nothing really there for you to target. That muscle is going to buffer it. It's not going to be um, that acupuncture point. That's an erroneous um, target. If you hit right in the middle of the neck, right where these two nerves especially, but if you just clip one, who cares? You're going to still have an incredible effect. This one's called the great auricular nerve. Uh, this one's the transverse cervical, and this is the one I like to work with myself because it's in that hollow pocket, not as tucked 
in. Now, if I come in on this nerve, I'm going to want to get in at a, a certain direction or trajectory to send the message into the brain stem. Same thing with the side, same thing with the front. But here's the extra bonus. Now, when you hit down, as I was explaining in the um, earlier video, okay, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to not attack the vertebrae or the windpipe, of course, um, with a direct blow. You're going to be glancing down. So the neck is going to fold on this side, extend on this side because of the muscle contraction here. Now, the muscles are going to contract because um, you're going to hit, uh, stimulate the muscles uh, spindle cells, okay, and that causes an autonomic reflex of action, okay, back in through here, if you're striking down, you're probably going to stretch these two muscles, most likely this one again, you're going to be um, causing the muscle spindle cell to get stretched out, and again in here, but as you stretch these muscles and all these fibers pull, as an example up in here, the tendons are going to pull, Okay, if you come up and through here, the tendons are going to pull. So you want to make sure that um, you're getting all the targeting. To do that, you have to strike it down and in on this target. Now, uh, the trajectory would be this way. Now, if the person was um, forward, you'd be punching down straight out like a forward punch. Let's turn this guy just a little bit more. Um, well, he's not really turning the way I want him to. Anyway, you would go with a front punch if you turned the person um, forward this way. You just catch onto the neck and punch that those nerves, getting the head out of the way first. So um, your angle that you're going to t target, okay, is down toward the opposite foot because that'll cause these uh, uh, muscle spindle cells, the nerve on the side. You'll get a little bit of vein action, no biggie, right, right in through there. Also, the tendons um, up in the neck connecting the uh, muscles to the skull and or jaw or um, body here, the uh, clavicle. So um, you're going to have three dynamic responses, okay? And that's how you would strike the neck, keeping the safety of the um, person but causing a great neurological shock to the body, be it from a um, direct nerve uh, stimulation and also a more indirect um, autonomic reflex action of the nervous system uh, stretching these two muscles. So uh, that's just an idea of uh, what you could be getting at using that with the San Chin. The San Chin is developed with the hand rotating um, as it, the palm or the palm or fingertips come out, the nukate comes out, you'll see that the, the hand, uh, your right hand here is going to come out and it's going to turn in this counterclockwise fashion whereas the thumb can target down onto this target, the, the iron bone uh, hand, or the, the big bone of your thumb. I don't mean the first knuckle. Um, that's a dangerous ploy, but we'll explain that in detail some other time. Uh, if you're using your left hand, your hand rotates in a um, clockwise rotation, and that would, again, bring the thumb down here, right onto the, the target, in that looping downward action so the bone of the thumb would be digging in between these muscles to get even deeper but at the same time stretching the muscle and of course shocking that nerve the transverse cervical nerve so q show is a little bit more intelligent in its applications because we have um, less force that we need to use we have greater effect that we get we have instantaneous effect Okay, and uh, later on there's no marks, there's no permanent damage, so we're safer, uh, again, in a court of law. So um, this is part of the conversation that we had. Uh, I'm going to go into a little detail with uh, little film clips here and uh, link a couple of links to his page, number one. Uh, number two, um, to uh, a couple videos that I did. And then uh, you can make the assertion for yourself uh, which direction you prefer to strike the neck in. And I'll be coming up with those conversations that we have um, on the Sun Chin and the uh, special course that we're doing in Salem, Massachusetts in January of 2019. And I'll be posting those later as well. So this is Evan Pantazzi. Thanks for watching the channel. Hey, if you like all these kata um, techniques and these breakdowns on the kata and you want me to get a little bit more involved with them, give the video a thumbs up, like it, share it, um, and pass it on so this information can pass along 
and uh, we can help you even to a greater uh, extent. Yeah.